I think this is my first thermal imager that'll work with my iPhone. This does USB-C for iPhone. They also have it in uh, Lightning for iPhone and they have it in USB-C for Android. Again, I think that's the first out of all the ones I've looked at. And I really like this thing. I've played with it just a little, but we'll go ahead and play with it some more today. It's from Top Don. This is their TC View. I believe this is, yeah, the 002C, which indicates that it's for USB-C iPhones. It comes with a really nice case, uh, nice and compact, and it it's actually kind of rigid, and I feel like I could throw this in my backpack and I'm not worried about the device breaking. A really nice foam insert too, which should help protect it. You got a lens cleaning cloth, some USB cables, stuff like that. And it's a pretty, um, sturdy feeling design itself. It's plastic here on the ends, but it's like anodized aluminum or something on the sides and top. And it just pops right into the phone, the phone that I happen to be recording with. So before I go thermal image a bunch of stuff, let's just talk about this thing. It will work for, again, this specific one will work for, you know, iOS devices of USB-C like the 15 series and certain iPads and stuff. It works fine with my 15, and they do have the others, as I said. This does 256 by 192 pixels, gives you pretty clear, you know, thermal image. So 25 hertz refresh rate. I think it weighs like 30 grams. So it's it's nice and light. It could be a lot smaller, but I have a feeling there's a lot of hollowness in here, and it's probably to help with the heat, especially with that aluminum, almost entirely aluminum case. You got like maybe 10% that's plastic, but they should act as a pretty good heat sink too. It does have, I like to use these things for looking at electronics. You can see when a chip might be acting up or when a component's getting really hot or something, and it really helps when you're trying to fix like vintage computers and vintage video gaming systems. But you could also use this for like HVAC to look for leaks to, you know, automotive diagnostics, all kinds of stuff. And since this does take its power from your phone, you don't need a battery. I have some that are independent and, you know, there's a battery that you need to charge up. Maybe you forget or it's been in your bag for a while and you go out to get it and the battery's dead. And you're like, great, now I gotta wait 20 or 30 minutes. This, you just plug it in, it's good to go. That aluminum case, I imagine, is gonna protect it pretty good from drops. I wouldn't intentionally drop it from height, but if you did, I'm pretty confident this would be okay. As long as you didn't land on the USB-C, then you might have an issue. So I think this uses, per their literature, I don't really have a good way to test this, but they say it uses 0.35 watts which means, you know, you should be able to use this for hours and hours and hours if your phone's fully charged. It is pretty comparable to what I've seen of the uh, similarly priced uh, FLIR units. You know, obviously you could spend like tens of thousands of dollars and get something that's better, but this isn't tens of thousands of dollars. So, you know, you're getting exactly what you paid for. I'm curious, what do you guys use these for? Um, I know I've seen a lot more YouTubers start to use them. Again, it's people like uh, Jeff Gearling, who's you know, looking at, at circuits and stuff. Uh, Mark fixes stuff, a friend of mine, you know, he's used them before. It's mostly the people that are doing the vintage computer repair, but I'm, I'm curious what my viewers might use this for. Maybe you're using it for epoxy resin pours or something. Let me know in the comments, but yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop filming with the camera. I'll go ahead and uh, screen capture and show you what this is like in use. And then we'll do some voiceover over that. But it's pretty, pretty basic. You know, it's the TC view. Honestly, this is one of the better ones I've had so far. Obviously, it's the newest one I've had so far. And I do have one for Android that is maybe a third of this size, but I really like this one better. The software was a little clunky for me to figure out how to change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Sorry, I think in Fahrenheit. I'm not in some technical role where it's like, oh yeah, I know that it needs to be between 40 and 45 Celsius. No, I like, in my head, it's Fahrenheit. So. That's out on the main menu, not actually in the device menu, and I eventually found it, but it was kind of a little clunky to find that. Other than that, everything is pretty good, and I imagine they'll keep updating the app and stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this hooked up and do some screen capturing and go from there. So here we've got the app open, and we're just gonna go into it here. Now you click down there, and you can go to the temperature unit. <clears throat> this is before you get into the device. So we're gonna go back out to that. And then we'll go and go into the device. You have to click to enable the thermal imaging. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change the ambient temperature here because it's a little cool in the house. And there's a pop-up for my YouTube notification. Every time I try to screen capture, I need to start setting it in private mode, but you know, 
So here I've got my hand in front of it, and it takes me a second to <laughs> realize what's going on. And I apologize for the echo. Um, I've cleaned my office out, and now there's a lot of hardwood floor exposed. So here we're just kind of looking at the chair I was sitting in and my footprints. This is on an area rug, and I just have way too much fun with this. I was just very tickled. So I'm going to walk over to uh, where it transitions to the hardwood floor here in a second. We're just going to take a look at the carpet. Okay, now here we go over to the hardwood. I kind of feel like uh, Red Green when he's uh, narrating Adventures of Bill. So here you can see it on the, the wood and the carpet at the same time. So now we're going to go into the kitchen. Let's kind of have a look around. Uh, the refrigerator's, you know, exhausting a bunch of heat onto the floor. And you can see this thing's really snappy and responsive. I'm trying to look at the top to see if there's heat coming out of the freezer. So we're going to go over here to the stove. I'm going to turn this burner on, and I immediately regret it because I remember there's something spilled on this burner, so now the house stinks. Uh, where you can see the orange there at the top, that is a like piece of chromed metal. Uh, so it's reflecting the, you know, the infrared. Same thing with the little trims around the burners. So I'm going to run the microwave here for a few seconds so you can see my fingerprints. And then I just want to see like what heats up in there. Now I'm realizing, oh yeah, duh, glass reflects infrared. So I wave to the camera and we'll just go in here and look. And yeah, the plate warmed up a little in those 15 seconds. Nothing else did. So now I'm thinking, oh, well, uh, let's get a cup of water or something. So we're going to go ahead and uh, close that. We'll come over here. I set the phone down for a minute and got some water. Now we're back. It's in the microwave running already. And then I'm going to play around here in the... <laughs> in the glass some more doing some Vulcan salutes and now I notice that my eyes look weird because of my glasses so I start doing weird stuff you know things a, things a child would do so we've ran it here for about 15 seconds you can see where it's kind of warmed up it's about 110 degrees or something we're gonna go ahead and shut it we're gonna run it some more I was hoping I could get some steam coming out and that if we could actually detect the steam so let's look at the chest freezer this always cracks me up you got all those like heat exchangers there that are part of the chest freezer. We're going to look over here on top of this bookshelf. Uh, you can see one of my Eero units it's putting out quite a bit of heat. It gets really warm. The microwave's done. I'll take a look at it. Uh, you know, it's a little bit warmer. About 100 and what, 2434, something like that. So we're going to run it just for another minute. I notice these weird splotches on my hand that don't have the heat. And I'm not sure what that is. The one up by my knuckle is actually like a tough patch of skin, but the others, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah, hopefully that's nothing concerning. So yeah, the glass is getting pretty hot. I'm going to regret picking this up. You can see the steam there just for a second before I picked it up. Yeah, that's pretty hot. I'm going to shake my hand off. That, uh, that crystal really lets the heat through. I was going to try to pick it up with a rag, and then I thought, oh, well, I don't want to thermal shock it. You can see the temperature's a little up there, but you can see the steam right here just barely. There you go. So we're going to pour it into the sink, and it's going to look like molten metal. <laughs> that uh, that really tickled me. I wanted to do it again, but I don't think you guys would want to see that, so I'll do that on my own time. But you can see how it dumped all that heat in there, and you got some good splatters. And yeah, no, this thing's really responsive and great, and uh, I love it. Yeah, there you see it. Um, pretty nice little device. And again, I really like this, like, anodized aluminum. It just, I don't know, it feels nice. It reminds me of my um, iPhone 4, the little teeny tiny one. I don't even think it was this big. It, was, it would have fit inside this box. And it had that nice, like, uh, anodized aluminum shell, and I never had a case for it. But yeah, that phone held up, and I imagine this is going to hold up pretty good, too. Thanks for stopping by. I'll have a link to this in the sticky comment. I will see you in the next video.